Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So we're back in Procreate today and in my OCs folder, I have this drawing of Masaki and Kaisen that I drew last week for Cat Day. But a lot of you guys actually really like this coloring style or this kind of drawing style. So I thought it'd be nice to do that for today's drawing session. But before we move on to the actual drawings for today's video, I wanted to go through the time lapse really quick so I can explain a few things. So for the drawing, I actually did kind of like a rough sketch like this with the sketching round brush that I usually use. After that, I switched over to the 6B pencil and we can kind of have this more traditional feeling look to everything. And I'm basically treating it more like a clean sketch or a very rough looking line art because I kind of do like it looking a little bit more of like doodling kind of feeling so I didn't care if there was like imperfections. After that I used the old beach brush which has that kind of watercolor texture and I'll kind of go through the kind of coloring process once we get there in the video a little bit later. So let's go ahead and start with these two OCs. So for today's drawing session, or I guess this is more like a sketching session, I guess. So I wanted to draw my OCs back from when I was in middle school, high school, and I think just before university is when I drew all of these OCs. After university or like during my uni days, I didn't really draw OCs that much. I primarily drew 17 fan art and solely did 17 fan art during that time so a lot of my OCs just basically got neglected and abandoned and then later on I think in 2018 2019 I started drawing Maseki which is like right after uni and I have like a whole new set of OCs now so even though I don't draw these old OCs anymore I kind of wanted to see what they would look like in my style now even though this isn't truly how I usually work in terms of drawing and sketching. It's still kind of fun to do. And I plan to do some redraws in the near future of some previous either illustrations that I've done of my old OCs or just revamping them and seeing how I interpret how I used to draw my old OCs into what I I guess like how I draw now. So I'll throw up the ones that I ended up doing before. I think there was five of them, but I'm only going to include the f or let's see. Yes, I can count. There's five of them, but I'm only going to include four of them. So we have my OC Daiki, we have Sairi, we have Hisoka, and we have my persona at the time, but I basically call her Chio, and that's kind of like the online alias I use for like games online or like if I have to make an account for something else and I don't want to use my real name, I usually use Chio. And yeah. So. In the near future, I will end up doing more of those redraws because I think it's kind of fun. So moving on to the second OC. So I didn't really talk about the first two. Uh, basically, they're a couple and I was really into Vocaloids at that time. And Daiki kind of follows into the same story as Sairi. So Sairi is the girl with the green hair and the music note headband. And she's kind of like my main OC at the time. But later on, I found that I enjoyed drawing males a little bit more. I don't know if it's just because like my interests or because I was starting to get into like K-pop and stuff. So I was listening to more boy groups. So Daiki Loki became my main OC, similar to how Masaki is kind of like my main baby of my OCs. So uh, the one next to Sairi on her left is her uh, best friend. Kiyoshi, which is a character I loosely based off my crush in middle school because I made Kiyoshi in middle school and they're basically a little couple and he plays the guitar and Sairi does the singing and like I mentioned, I was like super into Vocaloid so I wanted to have some kind of like singing OC and at the time, Gumi was my favorite so Sairi kind of is like inspired by Gumi at the time after that, we have Daiki, who has like a music note, uh, or not music note, a treble clef little necklace. And then I have a friend who has another OC who has the bass clef as their necklace, and they're kind of like best friends as well. After that, I drew my OC Mint, which is the girl at the very top. Right now, I'm drawing Hisoka, who's like my little... I don't know, he's like my precious little bean OC that I used to draw all the time. 
I know I'm going through these quite quickly, but I'm just gonna name them off as I sketch them. And then once we get into the line art or rough, like the cleaner sketch, I will talk a little bit more in depth about like each individual one. So Meimei and Momo are my twin OCs, and Meimei is the love interest for my OC Daiki. But for Meimei and Momo, they are twins who are very sports, uh, sports kids, I guess. She does ballet and dance, and then I have Momo doing mostly like soccer. So he's often seen wearing um, kind of like athletic gear, holding a soccer ball. They his like, what is it called? Like the sports duffel bag kind of thing, gym bag, whatever you want to call it. So that's kind of what they were roughly themed around and a lot of my male OCs now that I'm looking at them they have piercings on their I guess if I'm flipping it, it's their left ear which I find very funny because I see a lot of parallels of like overlap I guess between my old OCs that have been like low-key transferred to my new OCs so um, I'll talk about that in a little bit so let's talk about the kind of cleaner sketch or the line art. So I'm switching over to the 6B pencil and I made a new layer and made the previous sketch layer a lot less visible by lowering the opacity. And with this particular pencil, I was kind of debating on what style I wanted to do these kind of sketches because the one I did of Masaki and my OC Kaisen for the cat day illustration, both of their eyes were closed. So I didn't know if I wanted to go more detailed or I wanted to leave things very simple because initially when I sketched out the characters, they were kind of done in my, my derp eye style, which is just like a giant white pupil in the middle. But for these ones, I decided that I would just do them normally rather than the derp style, just because I think I did want them to be a little bit more detailed, even though it might not be as necessary since these are supposed to be a little bit more incomplete or like not super pristine anyways. But the 6B pencil in general, is like one of my favorite brushes to use. And I think using it this way alongside with the old beach brush to do the coloring, it looks really pretty and almost has that kind of like traditional art feel. So it's kind of nice that I found a combination that I like using together. Okay, but back to talking a little bit more about my old OCs. So for the most part, I think I only had roughly around 12 OCs total. So I was never the type of person who would have like a extreme amount or I wasn't really into character designing at all. And I feel like even like nowadays, I'm not really into that as much as like some other people. I think having characters are, is like very fun and it's nice just to have something that you can draw over and over again that you truly like. But for me, character design I do struggle with. I would like to get better at it eventually, but I feel like I would like to do more like studies and stuff rather than like continuously making new characters. So in the future, let's see uh, when I will ever get to those other OCs that I was planning, like the siblings for Akemi. And there's one other OC that I wanted to make for the flower zine thing that I wanted to do for later this year. So we'll see if those come to light. If not, uh, they'll be lost forever, I guess. So I've already talked about Sairi and Kyoshi. So Sairi, because of Vocaloid, Kiyoshi because my crush in middle school and then we have my OC Hisoka which is cousins to my OC Daiki and I feel like the similarities between Daiki and Masaki are kind of there in terms of mm, I feel like Daiki's personality is actually very similar to Masaki I, but I do think he's a little bit more childish and impulsive but I guess it also has something to do with their ages so a lot of my OCs at the time, because I made majority of them during kind of like my teenage years, their ages are pretty much all in their teens. So they roughly range between, I think, 14 to 18. And later on, when I was like at the very end of high school, I made two other OCs that are in their, I think it's, they're like 19 and 20, I think. So it seems like I was kind of gauging their age depending on how old I was. Maybe to make them a little bit more relatable to myself, but that seems to be um, how I kind of planned them initially. But Hisoka being 
kind of cousins with Daiki is similar to Masaki being siblings to um, Sato alongside with I wanted that kind of like brotherly relationship so having someone older and younger so I think Daiki is supposed to be 17 and Hisoka is supposed to be 14 so I wanted to have more of that little brother older brother relationship which is similar to how I wanted Masaki and Koji's relationship to be where Masaki is more of like older brother mentor figure for Koji so there's that parallel as well in terms of like personality as well Mint who's like the girl that I'm working on right now so initially I named her Mint was that I wanted her to be almost like mint chocolate aesthetic so I actually gave her very bright kind of minty colored hair mint colored eyes and she had more of like I guess I always liked this combination but I added more white to her color palette but it was like teal or mint colored and brown together but I didn't really like how bright her hair was so I made her hair to be brown instead of how bright the green was so it kind of felt more like mint chocolatey but then after that I like switched her entire like color palette up so she no longer resembles that kind of inspiration at the beginning but personality wise and kind of like the hair situation kind of reminds me of Sato because she was more of a headstrong kind of girl very fiery very much like will say anything that's on her mind kind of blunt which is similar to Sato also a lot kind of like longer hair and I like to play around with the accessories in her hair at the time so very similar to Sato and then we have Mei Mei and Momo who hmm I don't think have a lot of parallels to my current OCs I think maybe personality wise Momo's a little bit more similar to Kaisen but they still differ in a way so I feel like at the time when I made Mei Mei and Momo they maybe it's because like I wanted Mei Mei to be the love interest for Daiki I made Momo more like stern kind of rude to Daiki alongside with him being a little bit like of a tsundere rather than you know just someone who's like rude for no reason kind of thing but for Kaisen, Kaisen's a little bit more like silent and stone cold kind of feeling but he's not like a tsundere by any means so I feel like that's the only thing that I find that was similar for like current OCs versus my past OCs mm, yeah I think that's it but now with the clean sketch kind of done, I'm going to go ahead and set that to multiply and we'll change the clean sketch color a little bit later. For now, I'm going to change the background color to be more of a kind of like a softer yellowy beige color or even like a manila color just because I do like that warmth. So before we start using the old beach brush, I wanted to show you guys the texture of it too because it kind of does have that watercolor texture which I think is really pretty and I think it works well with this kind of style and kind of a looser coloring method. So for now, I am going to shade everything kind of chunkier and blockier and I'm trying to keep in mind where some of the highlights are going to be. Now, if I paid attention a little bit more, I would have picked a light source and tried my best to kind of do rim lighting and make sure that wherever the light actually hits makes a little bit more sense. And I would try to keep things a little bit clean. But with this brush, I think it's a little bit easier for me to use by blocking things in in one color first. And then later on when we want to do more of that watercolor kind of bleeding and blooming effect, I will show you guys once we uh, finish blocking everything in. But this brush, so it works best if you don't end up like lifting your pencil off your screen if you want one consistent kind of block of a wash. Now if you do do separate areas, I try my best to like methodically place where the break of the kind of like separation of the two areas that I want to put together so that it doesn't look too unnatural. Even though like overlap or trying to connect them doesn't look too off but I do find that if you do look closely you can kind of see where the overlap is because it kind of gets a little bit more 
solid filled or less of that watercolor texture and it becomes just like straight flat so if you want to avoid that then try to pick some natural breaks for you to kind of lift up their pencil or if you would like to kind of I don't know, I guess you take your time and try to figure out a path for yourself so you can color things all in one go. But I definitely think it's easier to kind of like break it up into different sections and kind of rely on the highlights a little bit to do that. So I picked orange and we're not going to use this like kind of intense orange as our base. I just wanted to make sure that I wanted everything to be on the warmer side. So we'll end up changing the color anyways. But I also find that this orange just stands out nicely against kind of like the beige or the manila color that I chose for the background. But with kind of the blocking of the colors finished, let's go ahead and alpha lock this. And I will go ahead and switch my brush back to my painting brush so we can kind of do our flats uh, and kind of like blending of everything a little bit easier. So I'm adjusting the colors to be a little bit softer but still in kind of that warm orangey range. And I'm going to use this as kind of my base color for everything. Now I'm going to do one softer gradient for all of their faces just because I do not kind of want that intense kind of yellowy orange on their face because the cheeks and like the blushing and everything kind of stands out a little bit too much in my opinion. After that, I went ahead and changed the sketch color to be a little bit warmer and lighter to kind of give it that more airy kind of effect. Then we can go ahead and use the paintbrush or like the painting brush that I usually use to do our kind of like watercolor washes. Now because Alpha Lock does a great job of just maintaining the texture and opacity of what you laid down before, I don't really have to worry about keeping my texture consistent or accidentally covering up the texture with this kind of process or like part of the process. So I can just focus on doing the color shifts and adding colors to our already placed areas of like orange. So for me, I like to lay down a color and if I want things to fade out, I will color pick kind of like the blended version of that color so it can slowly fade into the orange as the edges. So I don't know if it makes entire sense. So I will usually concentrate the color in certain areas, but as we get closer to edges where the light is being kind of like the strongest, which tends to be the areas that I didn't put any color down since I'm relying on the kind of canvas color to be the lightest and brightest thing on the page. So for me, I find it easier to pick like darker colors or mid-tone colors and lay it down, then gradually kind of using less and less pressure, you can kind of fade out the color a little bit. Now, this might depend on your own pressure sensitivity, the opacity of the brush, and just if your brush has the ability to kind of do a lighter touch when you have a lighter touch. So I find it a lot easier if you can use a brush like that. And then when you have like a faded color, you can kind of use that faded color to help bridge your intense color and in this case for me, the orange of our shadows or whatever color I had laid down as my base color. And this way it kind of looks like um, the colors are bleeding into one another. And I'll do one last final step to kind of reinforce this idea of kind of watercolor edges and that kind of texture, but we'll do that closer to the end. So I'm trying my best to pick colors that are very similar to how their original color palette is, but I'm being a little bit conscious of what the color looks like with this texture. So a lot of the times that I'm using or I want to use black, I'm not using like a straight up black and oftentimes because I think black looks a little bit jarring sometimes in this kind of lighter and brighter style, I am trying my best to blend things out nicely and kind of letting that lighter color shine through here and there so that I don't overwhelm certain areas to be highly concentrated with that kind of dark blue that I'm using. But for the most part, I definitely like coloring and using the style for sketching, so you probably see it a little bit more in the future when I post on Instagram and stuff if I do more doodling, which my brain has like Pokemon brain rot right now, so I maybe I'll do a few in the style and I think it might look cute. So uh, kind of little last things before we do kind of the little watercolor edge. So picking up very much the similar color as my base, I'm going to lightly 
kind of concentrate the color on the places where it has a harder edge. So a lot of these edges are going to be usually the ones that are right next to solid areas of, I guess like where you didn't place a color. So if you have white of the canvas as your white of your page and stuff, then I would do this anywhere where the hard edge and the white of the canvas meet. And you usually see this on certain watercolor pieces, especially done on cold press paper, that usually the edges of like washes or where color is placed, it becomes darker and kind of gets that crisp edge. But I think it kind of works nicely if you use kind of like a warmer color or whatever your color is for your highlights. Kind of gives it a cute little, a little bit of rim lighting, a little bit of warmth. So it's kind of my favorite thing to do as kind of like the final touch to these little washes of digital watercolor, I guess. So I think that's it for the little sketches that I did today. If you guys have specific OCs, I'll make sure to leave it in the very beginning that you want to see to be redrawn in my style today, do let me know. I know some people were requesting, I think it's Meimei, Momo, or my other OC, Kaori, I think. So probably do that in the near future. <laughs> Let's quickly go through the time lapse. So kind of rough sketch. Not gonna lie, when I did the rough sketch, I was trying my best not to go too detailed because I knew I was gonna have to do the majority of the detail in my clean sketch anyways, just because I knew how I was going to approach this. But yeah, after that, we have the clean sketch with the 6B pencil, which kind of gives it that really nice texture. Then we'll move on to the quick washes and the final touches. And that's it for today's session. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Please give the old beach brush a try. I think it's very fun to play with. But I think that's it for today's video. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!